Peace. Hey, What's up, bro? Hey. How are you doing, my good friend? I'm doing fine. Doing fine. It was a, it was a windy day today. Uh, oh, it's... Uh, um, very windy. Very windy, yeah. That, that's exactly right. Very windy. Let me get my thing up here so I can see the comments. Yeah. Right. What are you doing then? I'll greet everyone and say aloha, good evening, on this Thursday evening, the 25th of February. It's approximately 6.47 p.m. here on Facebook Live with Mel and Charlie. Yes, please take the opportunity right now. Uh, prior to us coming on tonight, we've had close to 40 shares of tonight's uh, segment. So please, when you have the chance, please share it. Okay. So hopefully a group of your friends will jump on and will be watching tonight, especially from the outer islands. We, uh, we want to thank those from the island of Maui since they had an, uh, a town hall last night or the night before, one of, one of those nights. I believe it was, was it last night? No, night before, night before, yeah. So we want to say thank you. Uh, one important matter, and that is, you know, we've got the, the mayor and the health officer for the island of Kauai because there seems to be some a dispute on some of the information that uh, Brother Mel had uh, put up. And like we said, we always get the information and we share it. And so tonight we'll be, uh, we'll be heavily discussing those matters as well as some other things. But whatever you do, folks, because depending on where you're at, the winds are somewhat high today. I hope and pray if you have uh, lawn, furniture, that's not tacked down, please take the opportunity to kind of secure them, bunch them together, tie them off. We don't want it flying in the air and you know landing in the streets or hitting your neighbor's home or anything like that. Just be safe. Okay, brother. Good advice, man. It, it's blowing here in Wailua. It, it is yeah. blowing and, and uh, Charlie is right. We're gonna have a ton of viewers tonight. A um, lot of uh, questions, I think. Uh, for our uh, our amazing mayor, Derek Kawakami, and our amazing uh, district health officer, uh, Dr. Janet Berman. Uh, we are so excited to have him on tonight. Um, I've been reading a lot of posts, going back and forth between the Maui page and, uh, and just, just throughout Facebook. A lot of questions about the comment that was made about the numbers that Kauai has put out. And uh, I, you know, I haven't talked to or spoken to the mayor or Dr. Berman. I'm assuming that they have a presentation that they're gonna do. We're gonna let them have that presentation, but I will definitely ask the question, how does Kauai derive its numbers? And, um, and I'm hoping that the Lieutenant Governor is watching or has someone from his office watching Maybe he can be educated a little bit tonight. You know, it's, uh, I, I saw one post just a, straight up asking him, what is the basis for him calling the Kauai numbers inaccurate? Uh, no response, that was on his page. And I can only assume the reason there is no response is because there is no answer. Um, there, there, was a, there was a off the cuff comment that, um, I know it's an easy out just to, you know, if it doesn't fit your agenda, then you just discredit it. Just say it's false, it's fake, it's not real. It's inaccurate. Okay. Uh, trust me, Charlie. If I was corrected by anybody, whether it's a lieutenant governor, the governor, I don't care. If I was corrected and said, hey, no, the numbers are inaccurate because blah, 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 blah. I'll sit right here tonight and apologize to each and every one of you. Apologize to the Lieutenant Governor. Apologize to anyone that I misled. I got no problem with that. But the fact of the matter is there is no explanation to why anyone would say that Kauai's numbers are inaccurate. <laughs> None. So I'm excited for tonight. I really am. I mean, it's always fun with uh, the mayor 
and Dr. Berman fun because they're very receptive, they're very responsive, and they're very thorough and transparent. That's why it's fun. You know, that's why it's fun and, and interesting. So uh, looking, looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Hey guys, um, real quick, PSA. Uh, thank you all to our viewers that uh, contacted Patsy and purchased those raffle tickets for Alyssa Ms. Shiro Katbagan, our young uh, angel that is undergoing treatment for cancer at Kapiolani. Uh, for those of you that uh, weren't here the last few nights, um, Alyssa Miyashiro Katbagan is, is a young girl, daughter of Gemalin and Joel Miyashiro, police officer Joel Miyashiro. His dad was my uh, good, good, good friend and classmate from high school. Um, we lost him to cancer a few years ago. Not a daughter is, is uh, going through treatment. So there is a raffle, a $10 raffle, and the prize, they already gave away four quarter beef, quarters, four quarters. Four beef quarters, four quarters of a cow. <laughs> and on March 22nd, they're going to be giving away eight quarters of cows, in addition to many other prizes. But this is the top prizes, eight quarters, which equates to uh, two cows. March 22nd, tickets are $10. It's a raffle. And uh, all proceeds, all proceeds, the, the animals, the cows have been donated by um, Kenderson Tespillo, Randy Boyer, and uh, uh, Leong. Mr. Leong from Leong's Meat House. Uh, completely donated. All proceeds goes to the family. So if you guys are interested, if you're able to, please private message Patsy Raposo right here on Facebook. Just you'll see it. She'll pop up. Patsy Raposo. Let her know how many tickets you want. She'll take care of you. Uh, for those of you over, I think we're close to 300 tickets sold just because of all of you. So thank you. Um, uh, no, Sarah, you did not uh, miss a question yet. We just talking story, uh, sharing this amazing raffle for Alyssa Miyashiro Katbagan. So again, if you guys are interested, $10 per ticket and uh, just private message Patsy right here on Facebook and uh, she will get you squared away, all right? I'm glad to see Sarah. Oh, by the way, share. Oops. Yep, that's good. Now would be a good time. Um, now would be a good time. Sarah Blaine is the chief of staff for the mayor's office. She is one heck of a person. Um, she, she's, she's there on the front lines with the mayor's team and um, has been very, very helpful to uh, not only Charlie and myself, but to many of you who we have referred over with questions for a, a very complicated situation. So Sarah Blaine, thank you. Thank yeah. you and your family for allowing you to do this and, and especially for being on tonight. When Sarah comes on, a lot of the questions she will respond and we appreciate that because we miss a few we miss a few throughout the night as this scrolls so uh, i i do i do want to uh thank sarah on a uh, another matter uh dealing with uh um trans pacific travel thank you sarah if you if you hear this thank you so much for all of your help we're able to rectify that situation and uh hopefully i i did not check with that person but um that person is very conscious about coming to Kauai and being in quarantine and wants to do what is right and doesn't want to step outside of the or go off the rails. And so, um, unfortunately, that person came into the state be, uh, to attend the funeral of her father. And so that's why we needed help. But uh, she definitely is going to spend some more days here, but she definitely wants to stay in quarantine, but she wants to uh, avoid family as much as possible because she doesn't want anybody to get sick if she is uh sick with the if she does come down with you know so she she just wants to be up and up which is commendable but thanks to you sarah for starting the ball on that really appreciate it thank you all right well we have mayor kawakami in the waiting room we don't want to keep our mayor waiting so i am going to let him in hey <laughs> there he is 
Oh, we just uh, give him a few minutes. Yeah, there he is. Hey, I gotta step out real fast. I gotta adjust one of these brackets that kind of popped off. Yeah, sure. I'll be no right problem. Back. Yeah, be, be careful. Yeah. Be careful. I'll be right back. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I just saw your text, Mayor. We have. Oh yeah. Of, I just yeah, said that. Yeah. You want me? You want me to put you back in the waiting room? Uh, yeah, I maybe like, I'll go do that. I like and looking at you. I like looking at the wave. The wave is pretty cool and relaxing and therapeutic. Oh yeah, I'll leave yeah. it here then. Can leave it. Thank, thank you, sir. Take your time. We got we got Dr. Behrman. Thank you. See how accommodating the guy. I mean. Everybody's, everybody's dying and dying to know why he has that fancy contraption on his arm. And I will let him tell you guys. Hi, Dr. Behrman. Hi, I don't like hearing the start of a public health uh, session where you're saying everybody's dying, dying. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> poor choice of words, poor you choice of words. By, you took me I by apologize. Surprise. That's okay. Well, this is Uncle Mel and that's Uncle Charlie. Welcome back on the show. This is anti Dr. Berryman. Yes, yes. Oh gosh, we're so excited to have you guys back on tonight. So excited, and uh, so are our viewers. And let me, I, I hate to interrupt, but I got to do this one more time. Please share. Um, please share. You know, Charlie and I get bombarded with a lot of questions. Uh, most of them we send right to Sarah, she gets right back to us. But tonight we have uh, Mayor Kawakami who had to step away to adjust his, bol his bolts. And um, Dr. Berman, our district health officer, which let me just say, we are so pleased and thankful for. Thank you. Thank you. For it's, being it's really you. A, a, it's a pleasure to be back here with you and, and to get to answer your questions and your listeners' questions. Well, we well, definitely have a few questions. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> and I know our I, viewers I, does. Yeah. Uh, I kind of would like to ask a question to start off the night. Um, maybe get right right, right to some issues, but we'll, we'll wait for the, the mayor to come back on the other questions. But with regards to the overall health of the state, and you know, with these variants that we're having, uh, there's, I guess there's certain programs that indicate that uh, variants for Hawaii was actually discovered back in December, but wasn't really, wasn't really touted. Did you know anything about that? I just read it today, that's why. There was about nine of the B, one, four, two, nine, that's a California variant, right? Right, um, yeah. you know, I know that there was news today that there were several of the B149, um, 1492 maybe, strain detected here. I'm not aware of the timeline. We certainly didn't have that information back in December. I, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, it's uh, B1429. There's two, two nine. nine, yeah, two nine and two seven. Yeah. But in, read, in reading this, and I just wanted to get your your um, your comments on it because uh, reading this uh, tracking system that they have for all of the states, it showed that the first time it was discovered, it was back in December of 2020. And that discovered, I guess, at the when it tapered off, if it did, uh, or reported was in January of 2021. So I know today in today's report, they said there were three but this report indicated that um, as of January, we had nine. So that's why I said, gee, that's... So, that's so I, think, I think we're talking about two different things. The three that have been reported here are the, the variant that's B117. Uh, and that's the variant that was initially found in the United Kingdom, but has subsequently been found, found elsewhere. And it's the one that we're particularly concerned about because we know okay. that it is transmitted much more easily. The California variant, um, and I'm not going to say the number again because I'll get it wrong, uh, is there's concern that it may be transmitted more easily, but that's not really clear yet. So it's it's something that we're watching with interest, but it doesn't raise the same level of concern that the B117 does. Okay. And the fact that that we can project or deduce that it was here in December is different from you know, it's not the case that the, that the Department of Health was doing that testing in December and knew this and didn't tell people. It's that now that these new strains are being identified nationwide, 
Um, nationally, we can go back and look at samples that were there in the past. The other thing that we can do is kind of extrapolate, which means mathematically say, well, if there are this many now, then there must have, then it must have first gotten here this long ago. So I didn't read the same report that you read, so I'm not sure what the technique was. But I do want to assure people that um, as soon as we have had real-time information about variants detected here, the Department of Health has been public with sharing that information. Okay, thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. So, so um, <clears throat> to follow up on that, how many, is it just that one variant has been identified here in Hawaii or, or uh, have, have we seen other, other variants? So, so we've seen at least the two variants that we just talked about, the B117, okay. the English one and the, or the UK one and then the California one. But I believe, I, I don't have that information at my fingertips. I believe that we've found some other variants also, but again, the one that we're concerned about because it may mean that disease is going to spread more rapidly is the B117. And that one we've only detected three of. Okay. Perfect. Welcome back, Mayor. Okay, Hi, Mayor. we're gonna we're, we're gonna start with you, Mayor, because uh, obviously you have a shoulder uh, or a, a, a sling. And rather than watch 2000 comments, what's wrong with the mayor's arm? Uh, we'll just let you address the, the viewers uh, however you want and let them know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I tore my bicep um, on Valentine's Day. Just oh. basic dude stuff. I was trying to install a shelf um, in the garage and readjust it. And it was just one of those weird angles where the bicep tore. It happened on my left arm in 2014, same thing, carrying a Christmas tree. Um, getting old comes with both pros and cons. And I think, um, so they did surgery. I gotta tell you, um, Dr. Rovinsky and Dr. Carnegie, um, they, they did my left arm when that tore. Um, and the whole staff at Wilcox, from the anesthesiologists, the nurses, to people checking us in, um, are just wonderful. I got to thank them. And I know that there are a number of people who have sort of um, pushed off medical appointments um, because, you know, there, there's a level of uncertainty. I have to say they are like probably one of the safest places to be at right now. If you have medical appointments and you need to seek medical attention, um, I am a first-hand account uh, during the pandemic that you, you shouldn't push it off. I mean, I had to have hernia surgery in May uh, during the pandemic and then uh, torn bicep, torn bicep uh, repair. Um, and they are, they, they got it together. So don't be um, putting off medical attention and appointments. Go get fixed. Well, but all right. Now, well, we were praying, praying for a very quick and full recovery, man. That's why I, you know, all of that kinds of heavy duty stuff, shelving, Christmas trees. I let my wife do all of that. Um, you know, I just she's she's much more flexible and strong. So yeah, I just leave all of that heavy stuff. I, I water the garden. Very hard to tear a bicep watering the garden, and but Patsy handles all of that heavy duty work quite well. So. Thank you all. Hey, um, appreciate you guys coming on again tonight, uh, Mayor and Dr. Behrman. Um, really, we really do. And there's a ton of people that are, are waiting for tonight. Um, and, and I know we have a lot to talk about, but I did want to go straight to, to the issue at hand for us is, is the numbers. Um, because I think there's a lot of confusion. And, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to share the, the numbers that I posted on our show a few nights ago. And let me just take this, hide this a little bit. Uh, and that this is the slide that sparked the controversy uh, or supposed controversy because of the numbers that, that I used and I received from, from uh, of course, officials. And, and it was, it's very clear. It, it talks about Kauai's cases uh, since October 15, and it goes into detail. I shared this with our viewers. Uh, we shared this 
when we had the discussion about Bill 1286 with our representatives, that's when I actually shared it. And uh, that thing went was shared to, on the Maui page and, and then eventually ended up in a town hall meeting uh, two nights ago. <clears throat> and, and the bottom line is, is the Lieutenant Governor basically said that the numbers are not accurate. Uh, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to start off with, just so we can get that out of the way. And then we really, really are interested in what's happening on Kauai with the vaccine and, and everything else. So uh, if you guys don't mind, can we at least, can we start with that? I assume you want me to take that one, Mayor. Um, Mel, not having, I apologize, but not having seen those specific numbers before just now, I, I'm not going to be able to say yes, each of those numbers is right or is wrong, because you know we can parse it so many different ways and look at so many different time periods, and I haven't totaled up the numbers uh, from October 15th till now in order to confirm whether or not that's true. But, but I can certainly confirm that on Kauai, actually since the beginning of the pandemic, travel-related cases have been by have been the vast majority of our cases. And we have not had established, sustained community transmission of COVID-19. And that's been seen in every other county in our state, but it has not been seen in Kauai. We've had a couple of times when we were seeing increasing numbers of community acquired cases. The major time was in the June and July timeframe. And we were very concerned about it being established in our community. And then again, when we opened to safe travels and we were seeing not only travel related cases, but some transmission from travel to our community. And that's when the mayor, with my concurrence and, and recommendation, um, opted to be more restrictive here around travel to and from the mainland and inter island. Um, and since then, cases have come back down since January. We've had, I think, 35 total cases, and 30 of those 35 have been travel related. So either the traveler or a household contact of a traveler. So that is that is the vast majority of the cases that we're seeing. So I, I don't know if that's helpful. I'm also curious what you and your audience, what conclusions people are drawing from that, because I think one of the things we were going to talk about today was when it would make sense or whether it makes sense for Kauai to be less restrictive about travel. And I'm happy to address that also. Well, Mel, yeah, let me, I, let me, I think let that, me, that for sure is what, what's on everybody's mind as well. Um, go ahead, Charlie. Well, Dr. Berman, I, I think the, the impetus on, on, on the show for the show tonight was because of the numbers and you just, kind of confirm what we have always suspected, and that is travel related. We, we looked at that real closely because there seems to be this comparison that have been played by some uh, state officials. And, you know, this, I don't want to dwell on it too much. But that's what causes the confusion because it, um, in a town hall meeting that was just publicized, I say, I think two nights ago, two or three nights ago, he claims that our numbers here Basically, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Mel, weren't travel related. Those are, those are false. And I, I'm trying to, you know, it, it really took me, it, it took me back because it's like, we're the ones living through it. So I kind of, and we've been transparent every step of the way. I mean, uh, you and the mayor have been very transparent that when something pops up and it's very, very identifiable on the news as well, because the news will give a state report and they'll pick up Kauai Day and, and Kauai independently report it. So that means that you're adding your numbers in there that maybe if you did it, the state would not share it. So that's that's the reason why our viewers right now have questions and they, on that um, town hall meeting on Maui, they posed that question using the Kauai, the Kauai data. So I didn't I didn't listen to the town hall, so I can't speak directly to what anyone right. said there. But I can. It is true that on Kauai we report a category of cases that are not reported by the other counties and they are not included in the state data. And those are cases that were tested somewhere else, but they got their positive results when they were here. And the reason we think it's important to count those is that those people are managed by the health department here. They're taken care of by the health care system here. 
they are go through their isolation and quarantine here. But even if you don't count all those cases, the publicly available data about travel, about cases that are related to travel is on the Department of Health's website. It's on the dashboard. You just have to click on travel and then you can look at statewide and you can look at each county. And the community cases are red and the travel cases are either light or dark blue. And when you look at Kauai County, it looks very different from the rest of the state. There's hardly any red on it. It's almost all blue. And that's not the case elsewhere in the state. And that's because of the, the measures that the mayor has put in place that have really protected us. So that, as I said, we don't have, haven't had sustained community transmission. And instead what we see is travel associated cases in small numbers, but still travel associated. Yeah, yeah and I, I sort of want to add to that. Um, and, you know, Mel, at, at, you know, during your time, on the council and then being council chair um and we've seen it happen over and over again where it seems like um it it can seem at times as if and this is just the way it's supposed to be right you, i mean the big city has the biggest voice they have the biggest challenges um, they help subsidize the neighbor island counties because of their population base. And, but at times it, it feels as if um, they speak on our behalf. And at times, you know, it can be, it can be frustrating. Um, and I just, I bring up this example. You know, Kauai was able to open up our economy as far as some of the higher risk industries, right? Like the hair salons, the nail salons. Um, we were able to get organized youth sports. So at least parents and children had some sort of relief uh, and, you know, some mental health sort of relief um, by allowing their children to, to engage in organized sports. I mean, even the senior softball league had their season and they were out practicing, which is a highest risk category. Um, and even, you know, a, a week ago or a couple, on Valentine's Day, in fact, you know, the AJ baseball league started off their season and we've been able to stay in tier four, which meant that, you know, as far as capacity limits, we're, we're up to what the governor's order allows all the counties to be at as far as um, capacity and restaurants. Um, and, you know, we've heard the rhetoric over and over and over again, um, you know, from, from the outside, um, sort of criticizing Kauai as far as being like shut down. But when you take a look at it, we've been, we've been open, um, we've opened sooner uh, and we've been able to pretty much stay open um, for much longer. O Oahu, um, and they got a huge challenge, but it, it's great that they are finally able to get to tier three. Like that is a huge accomplishment. Like Mayor Caldwell was going like full throttle on, on everything that he could possibly do to move from tier two to tier three. Uh, Maui has had to roll back capacity on restaurants from 50% to, to 30% and then put, you know, like a time curfew on operational hours. Um, and so, you know, I think this may be just um, a little bit of that is that um, we, we report uh, on time. Um, we give a lot of uh, detail into what the cases and what the investigations have shown it's related to. Um, and I think, you know, in a sense, uh, it can create confusion uh, as far as messaging and then really painting a picture to what the scenario is, you know, here on Koi at a local level. Um, we're very close to getting to a place where, you know, safe travels is going to be, um, you know, the, the way that we invite visitors here. But that is because we've had to prioritize um, things like vaccine distribution. That is something that very early on we had identified as being key goals 
to getting to a level of acceptable risk where we felt a level of comfort that we'd be able to uh, strike the right balance of uh, really opening up the economy and maintaining public health and safety based on many different factors such as healthcare capacity, um, you know, new technology to help in aiding on contact tracing. And, you know, our vaccine clinics, and I have to thank the Department of Health and their partners at Wilcox Memorial, KVMH in Mahilona, and now Longs. The vaccine pods and clinics have been firing on all cylinders, meaning it's it's been running better than expected uh, with you know very little to no disruption. But that's because people need to realize that the same people that are distributing vaccines are the same team that would have to contact trace or tend to sick patients if there's hospitalizations, um, work on quarantine and all of the support services that come with isolation and, and quarantine as well. And, you know, because of this, we're getting our people sort of vaccinated at a rate that um, that's really, uh, in my opinion, just learning about this. That's just um, something that Kauai should be proud about. It is a very complicated process to be able to coordinate the many different classifications based on federal guidelines to work with different employers and answer their questions and guide them on how they need to get registered. And, you know, just recently, our COI team was given some kudos for really uh, complying with the, the VAM system under CDC, I believe that we were, you know, the only county that was really um, doing it correctly, which is important if vaccine is going to be sort of like tied into being able to travel with less restrictions, being able to keep track of who got a second dose and making sure that there's an accurate database um, to build off of. So I know it can get um, frustrating. It used to frustrate me to, um, to no end, but I've just learned that nothing is gonna change it. Um, it's just the way it is. And um, sometimes we just have to stay focused and, uh, you know, in our own backyard and understand that, you know, at times we're going to be spoken like over, right? We're the smallest county. And um, so it's something I had to learn. I had to grow into it. Being able to just say, look, this is this is the city speaking on our behalf. They know a lot, but sometimes they don't know it all. And we just will stay focused. Well, thank you, Mayor. And and you know, as we've stated from the beginning, we appreciate your uh, your positions, your tough stands uh, with with the assistance of Dr. Berman. I, I like I said, you know, we're so lucky to have the two of you and your team. I did want to. Uh, your uh, chief of staff just posted a little while ago. Um, and I want to just reiterate those numbers because I think it's important that our viewers uh, know the numbers. Of our 213 total cases to date, 154 have been linked to travel. Since January 5th of 2021, when we launched the three-day test out at Resort Bubbles, 30 of the 35 cases have been linked to travel. So I think it's important that we understand that uh, while people keep mentioning uh, that we're locked down, that Kauai is shut down, and we need to open up. Uh, we were, we were, we've been open for quite a while. I mean, yes, we're not part of the safe travels for Trans Pacific, but the numbers don't lie. And I think that is what's being missed in the discussions outside of Kauai is that uh, that's not happening. That in fact, safe travel is a very safe program, and we we have seen it here on Kauai that if not for that second test system that you implemented. Uh, we would have not caught quite a few of, of these positive cases. So thank you uh, for being strong and for, for taking care of uh, for taking care of us, uh, both of you. Thank you so much. So the, the next question I, I, I had is, there seem to have been in the reporting of numbers, and I'll direct this to Dr. Berriman, that uh, early on, 
within the last month or so, maybe even more than that, um, the state had run into some glitches with the reporting of cases because we saw a, a drastic decline in the number of cases statewide. And I don't know if, um, if you have access to even comment on this, but um, many, and if you, if you read some of the comments on some of the posts, you'll see that um, the state responded in, in a way that with the, with the numbering system, there were some, uh, some errors, but there is, it's trying to be cleared up and that we'll see spikes in the coming days. Because of those errors, it caused lower numbers. So it seems like, like what Honolulu is faced with a seven day average as an example, right? They're basing it, a, you know, I don't know, is, is it safe to say, or am I just assuming that if they're gonna base it on those numbers, those numbers based on what they're saying is that there were glitches. They're basing uh, moving off of their tiers and I'm glad they are, but it, it almost seems that they're moving in a way using numbers that may not be accurate. Um, I'm happy to speak to that. Uh, yeah. There was a two to three day period in which the electronic laboratory reporting system that allows the results to come from big laboratories into the Department of Health's data system was not working as well as it should. And it took another two or three days to you know, get that resolved and then get caught up with all of those data. Um, but that's finished. That was, that was a, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Like I said, it was about a two to three day period of, of uh, glitch and then another two or three days to correct it. And that's actually a good example of why looking at the seven day average daily number of cases is better than looking at the actual count every day. Because if it was artificially low one day because we weren't getting reports, and then three days later, it was artificially high because it was the cases reported on all of those days, when you average that over the three days, you're still going to get a real number for how many cases there were in that period of time. So I think looking at the two week average daily count that we can be confident that that glitch in the, in the flow of data has been taken care of and corrected by looking at the averages. So if we're looking at numbers the, the way it is now, as, as low as it is, is, is the state and is Kauai ready to open with some of what they're proposing, especially like with uh, House Bill 1280, was that 1286, uh, or even what the Lieutenant Governor had mentioned, and that is, you know, looking at something where if someone has been vaccinated, you know, letting them, it's almost like a free pass into the state. Are, are we at that position or, or, or still we sh should we still err on the side of caution? I mean, even my wife and I were just saying in the heck with it, even if we're safe, just wear the mask anyway, because we haven't caught the flu. So, you know, it, it has to work. But I think, you know, that some of the messaging that has gone out thus far, we can see some of the complacencies, how, how some people starting to relax already. And I don't know if they're coming out uh, without emphasizing that, yeah, though we are low, which is good, we still have to maintain our position so we don't go back up and until you can get vaccinated and this and that, because not everybody is vaccinated. So uh, is the state in a right position to open up without having a, uh, a quarantine or, or even a secondary test? Mayor, do you want to take that first? Or do you want me to take that first? I'll take a stab at it. And then, you, you, and, you know, Dr. Bervin is not ashamed to correct me when, she, when I'm wrong, but I'll, I'll take a stab at it just because it's, it's good because this is more of a question like, like from a layman's perspective, like myself, if, okay, so we're not sure. Uh, we're still awaiting what the studies find as far as how long the vaccine is effective for. Um, there are new variants and the studies are coming out about how effective the vaccines are for the new variants. So there's a couple different factors that are sort of still being looked at to get some sort of definitive answer as to 
how effective this, these vaccines are because people also need to remember that there is no time in history where there was such an effort to vaccinate the whole world all at the same time in such a short amount of time. These are um, vaccines that were approved. They were looked at through clinical trials. Um, and there's new vaccines coming out that'll be even more promising. But I think everybody is still sort of waiting for some subject matter expert at a higher level that's looking closer at the findings of these vaccines to really determine what that's going to look like as far as having less restrictions. That's why in general, if you're trying to stop uh, upper respiratory or any sort of respiratory illness, those type of simple things such as wearing a mask and physical distance, distancing is just good practice. And that is why even though vaccines are getting out there, we're still issuing guidance to say, look, that doesn't mean that all of these relatively simple measures um, just evaporate. We should all still be practicing them. The other thing that I think people should take note of is that we need to have some sort of system to be able to really validate who has and who has not um, gotten a vaccine. It's very much like um, you know, after 9-11, there were some very strict restrictions as far as travel um, and extra layers of security that we've had to go through. Now, if we're going to be moving in the direction of having vaccines and people that have been vaccinated as sort of like um, TSA's pre-check, right, there still needs to be a system built to be able to effectively validate that so that you don't have somebody um, falsely saying that, yeah, I've been vaccinated um, and being able to sort of uh, counterfeit whatever that identification may look like. Uh, and I wouldn't know, but there still needs to be some sort of good system to be able to validate you know, who has a vaccine and is a relatively um, low risk as far as transmitting virus and um, who hasn't. So. We're all hopeful. Like if you were to ask me, what am I optimistic about? I am optimistic that that vaccines will be a way forward, that it's going to help, you know, our most vulnerable in the population and it will protect workers that have the highest impact in contact with high risk industries and that we will be able to get to a better sense of just normal day to day living um, because technology has just really um, sped up. And it's quite impressive to see how quickly um, science, medicine, and technology has been able to really um, be formulated to create some of these solutions. That would be my answer just from like a layman's perspective, but Dr. Berman probably has a much more comprehensive and on point um, answer for, for the viewers. I can unmute myself. Um, thank you, Mayor. And, and you know, as as always, you have a really good understanding of the medical side of things and also how it plays out for for all of us. Um, I do think that you know this is indicative of something that the mayor and I have been grappling with for the last year, which is that we always have uncertainties in this pandemic, and we always have less information and less knowledge than we would like. And I'm faced with making recommendations in the light of imperfect knowledge and the mayor is faced with making policy decisions in the face of imperfect knowledge. So there are many things that say, yes, it's time to, to be less restrictive about travel, particularly here on Kauai. Our disease rates have been extremely low for the last couple of months, but, but what reassures me more in terms of being less restrictive about travel is that disease rates statewide are very much lower than they've been for a long time. And then nationwide, where most of our visitors come from, but also where our residents like to travel to, rates on the mainland are still high, but they're coming down everywhere. 
And so those things are very reassuring. And, and at some point we reach a tipping point where the restrictions that we have had in place around travel for Kauai, we've been much more open locally as the mayor said, but we have been more restrictive to travel than the other counties. And the benefit of that you know, needs to be balanced against the price we pay for that. And the price we pay for that is real in terms of our economy and, and people's employment. So I think that we are uh, rapidly approaching the tipping point where we should be more open. There are some things on the medical and disease side that still are a reason for caution. One of those is the new variants. And we don't know how quickly those will spread or for sure how the vaccines will, will um, affect those. We think that the vaccines will still be effective. And if we can get vaccination out in front of the spread of those new variants, then we'll be in a good position. And that the other thing we need to look at is really what's the continued rollout of vaccination. So again, right now, Kauai is doing very well. About 18% of our population have had at least one dose and 12% of our population have had two doses or fully vaccinated. Um, and, I, you know, again, I think we should feel proud of that. And we're currently, the health department is giving 600 doses a day in our three weekly clinics, three days a week clinics. Initially, we were only giving 250. And we can ramp that up to give 1,000 a day, five days a week, as soon as we have enough vaccine to do that. And then the hospitals and, and the community clinic um, and longs are, are vaccinating also. So as soon as the supply um, allows, we can give much more vaccine. And that's another piece that makes it less risky to open up more to travel because more of our uh, residents are vaccinated, particularly frontline essential workers and healthcare workers, and of course our kupuna over age 75 who are most at risk from disease. So we've decreased our population risk at the same time as disease is coming down in all the places that people would travel to and from. Well, I, I do want to congratulate you folks because I saw on the news last night that Kauai leads the state in vaccinations as far as percentage and the amount of doses out. So uh, congratulations on that, the planning, the implementation, all of the people that have gone to get vaccinated that have come back and told me about their experience was, was all perfect. No, no complaints, uh, smooth, timely, uh, treated well. So congratulations on that. Um, that's the other big question is about vaccines and when do we open up vaccines to the younger people and, and uh, frontline workers. I know I heard the mayor say that one of the priorities <clears throat> um, before opening up travel and, and uh, any, any further is getting our hotel workers the employees of these hotels vaccinated, which makes complete sense. So um, how is that going, Doc? How is the, how's the vaccinations? Obviously it's going well, but maybe you can give us a little bit of, uh, it's okay to um, uh, give yourself some credit in your department and your, your team because we are doing a great job. Yeah, well, the team has really done an astonishingly good job and um, I give all, all kudos to them. And the team is made up not just of Department of Health people, but of many community volunteers from other organizations. So, and of course the county is an enormous um, partner in that as well as our healthcare partners. Um, but I also wanna give kudos to the community because as you said, it's a new vaccine and there are unknowns and some people are understandably hesitant to come forward and be vaccinated. So I think people have been good about, about asking their questions, about thinking seriously about the risks of the disease versus the risks of the vaccine and being willing to step up to protect themselves and our community. So I really thank the residents and, and the, you know, the, the people who've received the 22 plus thousand doses of vaccine that we've administered here on Kauai. Um, we have, um, already reached out to the hotels on Kauai as employers in order to obtain information about who all of their employees are. We aren't yet offering vaccine to all of those people, but we are starting with the employees of hotels that are currently open and operating. And we've already started vaccinating that population. And there's been, there's been good response to that. And we anticipate expanding to more and more hotels in the next uh, week or so. Awesome. Um, 
the one of the questions from the viewers about have we had any uh, serious cases of, of reactions here on Kauai that you that you can disclose uh, regarding the vaccines? I, I haven't heard of any. I've heard of some, you know, what what's been explained, but any any serious types of uh, reactions? So, so the most serious type of reaction that's been seen nationwide, not just here, is an immediate allergic reaction, which can be severe and, and is called anaphylaxis, but involves swelling and hives and difficulty breathing. Um, and we have seen that here on Kauai, not in large numbers of people, but that's the most serious thing that we've seen. Now you folks announced, Mary, you announced um, some, some additional clinics that are gonna go up uh, upcoming. And maybe you want to touch on that a little bit for those that uh, I think it's still for the 75 and above. But what when, when's the when are the clinics and how can people get get appointments? Do you want me to speak to that, Mayor? Oh, I whoever. <laughs> um, if, if you, if you so, know, uh, I, I know I'm, you know that's. That's one of the things about these live shows with no prep. I apologize if I'm asking questions. Okay. I probably should have sent you over a, a, a list of questions that I'll be asking, but this it, is it, just- It stumped the stars, I like it. Um, it keeps us on our toes. So uh, there was some confusing uh, reporting in the news this morning here locally on Kauai that I think may be what you're referring to. Um, the hospitals, all three of them, Mahilona, why Veterans Memorial Hospital and Wilcox are all vaccinating Kupuna 75 years of age and older, and they have appointments available for both first and second doses. And the information about how to schedule those is available on the, the county website, kawaii.gov slash vaccine. And the county's office on elderly affairs is able to assist people who can't do it, do the registration online, but we do encourage people to help family members and friends and neighbors who, who may need assistance. There hasn't, there was a brief time when there were not appointments available for first doses, but those have been available again for a week or so. Um, and then the Longs in Kapa'a is also vaccinating Kupuna 75 years of age and older. And again, that's done online through the CVS website. So there, there hasn't actually been a big change in that. I think that we the outreach that we intended to do was that there really are appointments available and if people have been waiting or have been concerned that they wouldn't be able to get in they should feel assured that there's plenty of capacity there's plenty of vaccine and there are appointments available so we really want to be sure that everybody who's 75 and older is able to access vaccine if they want it uh this is for dr berman um earlier earlier in some of the comments I scrolled back and I guess some were asking, it, it seems like there's less testing now that, that's happening. Is less testing a result because the numbers have come down so you don't have to test as much? Or, uh, or, or what's, the, what's the deciding factor on that? Because I guess it, it goes back to that old adage when we first started when uh, the department was under Dr. Anderson and Dr. Park back then was uh, least amount of testing will you the least amount of results. And then, you know, you just basically have to wait until someone shows up for medical intervention. That's how you'll know somebody has been stricken with the virus. Um, is that still a process now with, with, with least testing that, um, uh, that the people can be relatively safe on that? Because there's- there's mm -hmm. there there are a lot of factors related to this, Charlie, and if I may, I'll talk about several of them. So it's definitely true that we're doing less testing than we were even back in October, November, December. And I think part of that is that people are less worried, are both doctors and their patients, and so they aren't going to be tested as much because they can look at the same numbers that you did and say, I haven't traveled, I haven't been around anybody who's traveled, and we don't have community spread here, so I don't, I don't need to feel so anxious about it. So I think it's it's appropriate that we're seeing less testing. Um, we're also, the surge testing that we were doing every Sunday came to an end. So that was about, that was a high number, several hundred of tests every week that we were doing. 
but recently what we've done with the support of the county is open up the testing at the convention hall to anybody who wants it. It's free. It's Monday through Friday from eight in the morning till three in the afternoon. You get your results the same day. There's no need to have an appointment. Anybody can walk in and be tested who wants, who wants to be. And since we've made that available to everybody, we've seen a real uptick in the numbers there. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact number, but upwards of 50 people a day being tested. Those numbers though, at this point, do not go into the statewide database of how many tests are being done on Kauai. So if you look at the Department of Health website and look at the total tests per day, you won't see the tests that are what's called point of care that are done right there and you get the results rapidly. The state is working on a, a practical way for us to submit those results and they do now have something that they're just rolling out. So I'm hopeful that those numbers will be included in the statewide count soon within the next week or two, but I don't have an exact time frame for that. So I feel, I feel confident that yes, we're doing less testing than we used to. We're doing more than is reflected on the state website. And I think that it's an appropriate amount of testing for the amount of disease that we have. Could I add, could I add on to that as well? And, sure. and you know, when we, when we sort of look at our, our, our plan on um, sort of like reopening, we start to work from, you know, an, an end date and we start to sort of like work backwards and take a look at different tools and factors that could help us, um, right, get to that um, higher level of acceptable risk. And um, like we've talked about the vaccine pods and clinics have been running smoothly and, you know, we're getting out uh, as much vaccine as we can get our hands on. Um, and of course, uh, testing has also evolved tremendously. I mean, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, the state had the capacity to, I think, run like 500 test results a week, and it was really low, and it took a long time. And now um, the technology and the science has really evolved. And one of the things that we have gotten recently really excited about is that, um, you know, the industry um, and, you know, with Senate President Kochi, Rep Tokioka, um, Fred Atkins, uh, Dan King from the Hyatt, and then recently, you know, the, the players on Kauai, um, they have been able to identify uh, a Dr. Duhe who has uh, Hawaii roots, went to Punahou, um, uh, he has been able to also uh, develop different tests, um, one of which is still going through the process to get the FDA authorization for emergency use. Um, but it looks like the, the accuracy rate and the margin of error is, is at a pretty good level, at, at a pretty good price point. And we were sort of waiting for when the economics of these sort of tests, when the supply would sort of even out, you know, with the demand so that the price point would get to a level where it was much more affordable. And, you know, so recently, you know, the, the hotel industry itself has said, hey, you know, it looks like at this price point, if, if you know, this is something that we could on our own, um, you know, work with the county to, to do a lot of lot more testing on our end. This is our way to contribute to the safety of Kauai, knowing that you know we we are accepting risk. Many of the workers at these hotels are also sort of saying we we would like to know you know if the guests that we are um, that we are tending to and you know um, and serving you know whether they're sick or not. Um, are also asking for this. And so it is, it's promising to see that the industry itself has said that, hey, we, we wanna work with you folks. We do realize that testing is a key component of early detection. And so that leads to an early containment of the virus to avoid um, seeding community spread. We, we live here, we're a part of this island. And, um, you know, we're working with them to, to sort of formulate a program which will also increase the number of tests as more visitors start to arrive. So these are also factors 
that I think lead to the high level of confidence that Dr. Berriman, myself, and our team um, feel because, like I said, there, there's new things evolving that help us to really um, coexist with COVID-19, right? That has been what we've been mentioning to people from the very beginning is that this is about society's ability to come together to coexist with a virus. We don't wage a war against, against a virus because it's just, we're, we're going, you know, it's, it's hard to wage a war against a virus. All we can do is try to uh, get through this challenging time with what we say is the four pillars of coexisting with viruses, which is one, the holy grail of prevention, uh, detection, and of course, um, containment. And ultimately, um, if people do get sick, we want the hospitals to be able to, to treat them as well. And so this is where we're at today. It's a much different scenario when we were where we where we were two months ago. And it's definitely light years of where we were when we first embarked on this big challenge, you know, a little less than a year ago. You know, um, Doc, this one's for you. Uh, a lot of questions about <clears throat> the Scheduling, you know, you touched a little bit about it. I know the confusion, the Fed say 65 and above and Hawaii is still at 75 and above. And I, and I want the people to understand that that decision is made at the State Department of Health level. But what, what can people here on Kauai expect as far as expanding to the next levels? Do we even have a timeline on that or is that something we have to wait uh, for the state uh, on Oahu to dictate? Yeah. So I had a conversation with a resident today who really felt that the Department of Health had misled the public by saying that we would be expanding eligibility to Kapuna 70 years of age and older and to Group 1C, that we would be doing that soon or in the next few weeks and felt that it was misleading to say that without giving people also a way to register um, and a specific date. And unfortunately, we just don't have those now. I will say that in the same way that Kauai has been a little bit different from the other counties, um, I think that we are, you know, we would be ready to start vaccinating 70 and older and people in 1C on Monday um, if we could get a green light to do that. But we don't exist separately from the rest of the state. We are part of the, of the whole state. And we need to recognize that you know, because we've been more efficient doesn't necessarily entitle us to a disproportionate amount of vaccine or to move faster, uh, that more faster, if you will, than the rest of the state. So we are eager and poised to expand the eligibility for vaccine as soon as we have a green light from the state to do that. And maybe the mayor wants we, to say something. We, we had that. We had the HHSC representatives on and they explained the process of how the vaccines are distributed, how it gets to Kauai, how you got to basically sign out for it. You know, you get the one vaccine per registered person. So it's, it's very, very complicated and complex. Uh, and, and I think the misconception is that there's all these vaccines and, uh, uh, and I think they made it very clear that it's limited and, and Kauai has done an excellent job in in preserving the, the inventories to make sure that our, our, our people get a second dose and not run into a problem where you got the first dose and not the second dose. Yeah, we, we don't have big stockpiles of vaccines either in the health department or in the hospitals, but we are managing it so that we keep a little bit of a cushion. So when there's something like the big storm that delayed the supply of vaccine, we had enough that we didn't have to cancel a large number of clinics. We got very close, but then we got all that vaccine this week. So we're good to go again. So it's, you know, it's always a judgment call, but, but we're doing um, absolutely everything we can to get, as we say, shots in arms as quickly as possible uh, without disrupting the, the scheduling of things. And I think we're doing a good job. You said we could toot our own horn a little bit, so. Leading the state, you're leading the state. I mean, you know, I'm proud. Oh. We're not doing bad uh, looking at all the counties in the country either. So yeah, yeah. Um, there's this there's this thought process, you know, like the the viewers on tonight is not only from Kauai but across the state, as uh, as as we normally do have them on. Um, 
But the question is, with the experts such as Fauci, you know, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Uh, Osterholm, um, um, Peter Hostes, and, and and the likes, you know, there's there's still concern about the variants, and they they they've expressed it very very emphatically that you know they're they don't know why num certain numbers are the way they are right now, and so they're paying close attention because the variant they don't know if the variant will sneak right behind it. So I guess my question to you both is, knowing that we still have hotspots in known states that travel to Hawaii as part of their uh, vacation destination, how do we handle that? How, do, uh, how, how would you handle that? Because, you know, coming to Kauai, like you said, we're small, but once, it, if it should take a hold, I, you know, I don't want to be a, uh, I, I guess I am pessimist right now <laughs> by saying it, but, you know, if it does come and just takes off, I mean, we're, it seems like we're almost at a disadvantage. So how, how would we, you know, in line with what the, those, those experts are saying about worrying about the variants coming, um, they haven't said it's, it's coming to Hawaii, but yet they know the states that it's popping up all over. And yet, like California, for example, knowing that a lot of travelers like to come to Hawaii. That's the question. Yeah, as, as we said in the beginning, some of these variants are already popping up here. We know that they're here. Um, and when we know where there's a hot spot or, or where there's a variant on the mainland, you know, it takes a while for that. There's a lag in that information. And so by the time we get it and try to implement a policy that tries to, to change that, I think that's sort of closing the barn door after the horse is gone, so to speak. And that the kinds of safeguards that the mayor was talking about being able to test people robustly, having our population have access to vaccination, you know, doing the, continuing to do the pre-travel testing, continuing to do all of the surveillance that the Department of Health does, uh, doing what's called genomic sequencing to look for variants on, Hawaii's doing that on a larger percentage of our tests than most of the states are. So I think that it's those safeguards that we have in place that protect against that more effectively than trying to restrict travel on a very place-by-place -place basis. So if, if, if testing is one of those criteria to be the, that, that, that defense, um, Mayor, are, are you still required to um, get approval from the governor if that's something that you want to do? Or, or is he letting you do it on no. your own? Uh, I think this, like the, the beautiful um, thing about this latest conversation that we've been having um, with, with the visitor industry is that this is something that they are speaking amongst each other um, from an industry standpoint okay. as really committing to the people of Kauai. Um, they have the same concerns that I do. You know, there was a survey on the general public perception of how local residents feel towards visitors. And there was always sort of an underlying uh, bad taste in some people's mouth about the, the visitor industry that existed even before the pandemic. Um, but especially, you know, during the pandemic, there was a level of uncertainty and of course um, concern that I think the industry is trying to really address up front and understanding more about the virus as we all have learned that as much testing as we can possibly do, the better it is going to be for our island to be able to sustain an open and vibrant economy amidst the pandemic. Like people still have to realize that this is still an ongoing pandemic um, where the transmitter of the virus is person-to-person is -person contact. Like we are the movers of this virus. Um, and I think with their understanding um, and them wanting to engage um, in the public health and safety of our community, um, that, it, that component of it th does not need to be uh, approved through the governor. I do believe that once again, it's going to um, show that Kauai uh, knows how to lead by example, because from my understanding, this is the first time where the industry, uh, you know, as a majority of the players have come to some consensus that 
this is something doable. This is something that we want to do. We want to work with the State Department of Health, the, the County of Kauai to, to you know, help pull our weight and contribute. Um, the only approval that we would need is, uh, you know, when we get to opting back to safe travels, of course, the governor is, is going to have to approve that. But for the increased testing on the industry side, um, it, it wouldn't need any approval. Um, this would be something that the industry would either absorb the cost within their operation or uh, pass it on to, to the visitor as a cost of doing business. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, we are at almost eight o'clock. I, I did um, have a couple of questions and I'm not sure who can answer. Are we still doing testing? And this is from the viewers. Are we still doing testing at the convention hall for, uh, for concerned residents? Yes, the testing at the convention hall, walk in, no need for appointment, Monday through Friday, eight in the morning till three in the afternoon. Unless if you have symptoms, if you feel yeah. sick or you got symptoms, do not, please do not show up to that testing facility. Please call a physician or one of the hospitals. They will give you good guidance on how to, how to proceed. If you have symptoms or feeling sick. Thank you, Mayor. And, and that is that uh, Dr. Miskovich was asking what type of tests are we providing at the convention hall? Do you, do it, any of you it's, a, it's a rapid PCR test. It is a PCR test. Is a, but it's a rapid one, so you get the result within a couple of hours of after you're tested. Okay. Yeah, he didn't think it was a PCR test. The other one, uh, the other question is, I know you talked about hotel workers getting vaccinated. Is that here on Kauai or is that statewide or and, it, and, and how does that happen? Is that something DOH is reaching out or do hotel uh, or hospitality industry employees contact the DOH? So right now that's only happening on Kauai and it's happening the same way as the other employment-based vaccination, which is that the Department of Health is reaching out to employers to get lists of their employees and their employee email addresses. And then they get individual emails from the Department of Health and actually from the Centers for Disease Control that allow them to register. For people who may think that their employer, that they should be eligible and that they haven't been contacted yet, we would ask them first to check with their employer. Uh, but it's certainly possible that we've missed some employers who would be eligible. And on that same county website, there's a very short survey that people can take if they believe that their job makes them eligible and they have not heard from us. We get a lot of inquiries through that. People should know that if they are eligible, they will get a response from us. If they are not yet eligible, they're not going to hear back from us because we just don't have capacity to respond to every single inquiry. And we appreciate the patience of the many, many people who are eager to be vaccinated and just aren't yet in the categories that are eligible. And we look forward to opening to them as soon as we have enough vaccine to do so and a statewide go ahead. It's eight o'clock. I appreciate, you know, I'm not going to, I respect you guys' time. I know you guys are, it's a long day for you guys, a long night, um, but I do want to give you guys an opportunity to share your thoughts with our viewers. Um, Dr. Uh, see, look at that brain fart. Dr. Berman. Um, I, I think I just had my say, which is, uh, which is just to reiterate the really huge appreciation for the many, many people that I know are eager to be vaccinated and aren't yet eligible, please be patient. Please keep paying attention to the county website and the mayor's updates. And we are as eager as you to vaccinate you as soon as, as, soon as we have supply and green light to do so. The mayor? No, once again, it's in, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Behrman and I will be on um, again. So until then, I wanna wish everybody the best um and we shall see each other again and our team will continue uh to grind away for as long as it takes um to get this island um through this challenge and you know for all of the businesses that are really dependent on visitors i want you folks to hold on we we, we hear you we haven't forgotten about you we're doing everything that we can to, to get to a spot where we can open and stay open and keep the island safe and have you folks um, be able to get back on your feet. I, I am extremely sorry 
if many of your businesses have felt that you are in the dark, um, we, we try our best to communicate. It is um, challenging to come out with plans when, when plans change so quickly, but we are very close um, to getting back to a level where we'll be consistent with the rest of the state of Hawaii. We have a high level of confidence that we will be able to strike the right balance and keep this island safe. And um, I just wanna say, that we will do better um, communicating to you folks. And I just want to let you know to just hold on because we're so close and, um, and we are, we are going to get through this together. Thank you, sir. Charles. Well, as always, I'd like to thank our guests tonight, the Honorable Mayor Derek Kakami and our health uh, officer for the Kauai region, uh, Dr. Janet Behrman. Thank you so much for joining us. To our viewers out there, I thank you so very, very much for joining us tonight uh, with myself and Mel. I see we had a lot of comments, we had a lot of interaction, which is good because folks, like we've said many times over, we just bring the facts out. We try to get someone that has the facts or we try to get someone that can make sense of what's going on. And then you decide. And if it's not for you, then put it away and just wait for the next item to come out and then we can discuss that. But for the most part, what we need to do is our part I know we're trying to achieve something that's never been seen before. Well, in my lifetime, and that is we're trying to vaccinate an entire world. We can do our part. You get vaccinated, but you still got to continue that safety moves. And that is wear your mask, practice social distancing, sanitization, hand washing, and avoid the large crowds. But because certain things are happening now, even if you decide that family is important, which it is, just make sure you understand the safety bubble with your family, know where they've been. If they've been outside traveling and they come in, there's always that risk that you can run of getting sick if they should have the, vi if they should have the virus. So just use caution at all times. That's the best advice anybody can give right now. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Mel? Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Berman. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah has been trying to <laughs> answer. There's so many questions flying up this, this screen. Uh, we can only answer so many of them. Sarah has answered quite a bit. Thank you again. Uh, we appreciate, you know, that we try to, like Charlie said, we try to bring just straight, straight talk, transparency, and that's what I think that was accomplished tonight. A lot of questions were answered. Uh, again, I, I want to congratulate you guys for, for doing what you do, you're leading the state in so many ways. And I know there's some people that aren't happy, uh, but again, guys, we're all in this together. I know people uh, are frustrated. I am. I want to go see my kids. I want to do a lot of things, but you know, let's get through this. Let's work together and let's get through it. We are, we're blessed to be here on this island with, with leadership that is uh, that cares for our health and safety. And uh, I don't know, you know, saying thank you is really not enough, but we appreciate you guys so much. Our viewers, as always, thank you for sticking around. Uh, we had a lot of people on tonight. A lot more we'll watch later. <laughs> Somebody just said, I missed the doodle -doo boy days. Somebody just posted that. So cute. <laughs> We'll go back. We will go back to the Doodle Boy days soon. We gotta get past this first. Tomorrow well, night, uh, uh, brother, brother. Let's uh, let's also give a shout out to Sue Cano. She's been on tonight answering some questions. Want to thank you, Sue. Oh, I, very much. I missed that. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, the, the trooper. Yep. T tomorrow night, uh, feel good Friday, guys. Small business, support local. We'll have fun tomorrow night. Not that we didn't have fun tonight. I had a blast. Mayor, take care of your arm, buddy. Take care of that arm. Let your wife take care of heavy duty stuff, bro. Trust me, <laughs> it works. All right, guys. We love you guys. God bless. Take care. Stay safe. Aloha. Yeah. <laughs>